this morning we were reading the verse from the ninth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, which specifically told us when Lord Ram and Sita were passing through the streets of Ayodhya, the residents of Ayodhya dressed in their nicest garments, went on tops of roofs and palaces and terraces, showering Ram and Sita with flowers and flower petals. And we cited a verse from Bhagavad Gita. Patram pushpam palam to yogi bhakta Krishna tells, if one offers to me with love and devotion, even, even a leaf, a piece of fruit, a flower, or some water, these are items that anyone, regardless of one's position, can easily obtain. She says, I will accept. Not only does he accept it, but he takes great pleasure in receiving offerings of love. The Lord is Atmarama. That means forever self-satisfied. Sarva Loka Maheshwara, the proprietor of everything that exists. The Gita tells, Aham sarvasya prabhava matta sarvam pravartate iti matva vajante mam buddha bhava samadhita. Krishna says, I am the source of all material and all spiritual worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who know this perfectly engage in my loving service and worship me with all their hearts. Krishna is Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchi Ananda Vigraha. Everything about his Supreme Personality is ever existing, eternal, full of knowledge and full of ecstasy. Rasa Vihari is forever exchanging the highest mellows of love. So Krishna does not need anything from us. But one of the great mysteries of the spiritual science is how the Lord who is unconquerable agrees, in fact takes great happiness in being conquered by the love of the devotee. This morning, so many different kinds of people from different parts of the world, some illiterate farmers, some PhD engineers from IIT. In fact, we have a PhD from Penn State University in our farm who has dedicated his life to getting energy from cow dung at our farm. Colors from different religions, from different backgrounds of all sorts, rich, poor, all sitting together in circles, plucking petals from flowers. Something anyone and everyone can do. But yet, this simple way of communicating is actually what brings hearts together in a real way. We can have our League of Nations and United Nations, which have their use, no doubt. We can make complex legislations, alliances, agreements. But 
then it could make things a little less bad. But to make things actually really good, real communication is based on the simplest things of the heart. And the deepest, most profound, highest sciences and philosophies are meant for us to appreciate those really simple things. Srila Prabhupada said that real spiritual life is simple for the simple and very complicated for the complicated. And what creates complications is when we have ulterior motives. Prabhupada wrote in one beautiful purport in Chaitanya Charitamrita that pure love of God is very, very rare. But it's easily given by Krishna for one who is sincere, serious, and has no ulterior motives. It was a beautiful sight, seeing everyone together actual equality. Before God, we're all just a bunch of flower petal pickers. <laughs> and we're happy to be so. And in doing so, we can actually see the beauty in each other. Because there's not much to impress. Sometimes in certain things we do, we want to show off, we want to impress people that I'm better than you, I can sing better than you, I can dance better than you, I can speak better than you, I can dress the deities better than you, I can cook better than you, I can manage better than you. But as far as picking flower petals, <laughs> not, I was watching, there wasn't really much difference between anybody. The children, the grandparents, PhDs, the rich, the poor, everyone was picking their pellets. And the consciousness that the accumulation of all these flower petals together, each particular petal, an offering of an expression of my intention to please the Lord, to please everyone else, and to show my love. The more, the more petals, the more pleasure. And this is the idea of Sankirtan. When many people come together in a very simple and honest way to combine our hearts in the kirtan, in the chanting of the God's holy names, then it's like a shower of many petals of our devotion. And that is really what kirtan is meant to do. To raise us above all of the egoistic, selfish distractions that we're so often victimized by within and without and to take shelter of this higher divine power which has come in the sound vibration of God's names, the mantras. And when we unite, it's like a shower of each one of our hearts is like a petal being offered to the Lord. And we all become one in spirit. spirit of today's festival. Just like when cooking for Krishna, the crescendo is when we actually take the efforts of all the devotees who have cooked, who have cut the wood, who have, because I'm used to cooking on wood, when you cut the wood, buying the vegetables, or picking the vegetables from the garden, cutting them, putting it in the pans, spicing it, putting it on the Lord's plates. But the crescendo is when we actually offer it. And everything we've done is all culminated together as an offering of love. And in the same way, we have all made this preparation. Maybe the author received basket.
Sense of Flower Kite. Some of the color maps are painted as fish. How many times this year? One time. How many kilos is that? It's 1,000 kilos or 2,000. feels like a ton for Krishna because flower petals. <laughs> Even if it's a ton, it's really light. It's a mystical thing. <laughs> Soft. We were talking from Ram's Lila about this principle of simple offerings and devotion, how they please the Lord. I'd like to tell, with your permission, a few more stories. Great Vedic literatures. 5,000 years ago, just before the Kali Yuga began, Lord Krishna manifested his beautiful pastimes in Vrindavan. Vrindavan Krishna revealed his most intimate lila or personal loving exchanges with his devotees as a very simple little coward boy, the son of Nanda and Yashoda. And when Krishna was just a very small child, he the Bhagavad Gita says, Janama Karma Chane Vivyam Yo, that one who understands the transcendental spiritual nature of my appearance and activities in this world will never take birth again in this world. Although the Lord is unborn, for our sake, he's born. If we say God is unlimited, how can you say he's born? Or to say he can't be born, he's limiting him. God could do anything, attempt to shakti, in any way, so when he was just a little boy, he used to watch his mother. They didn't have currency in those days. They would barter, trade one thing for another. So this lady came out from the forest. She was just a simple tribal lady. And she came from the forest with a big basket of fruit. She cried out very loudly, if anyone in Vrindavan would like some fresh fruit, please come and buy my fruits. And little Krishna Gopal heard her speak. And he really wanted some fruits. So he went to his mother's storage of grains, wheat grains, and took a handful. His hands were only very tiny. He was only about three or four like that. Not even three. He went running, 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 running. But as he was running, all the grains were coming from between his fingers and falling to the ground. And by the time he came to the fruit counter, there was only two or three little grains in his tiny little hand. And he held it out and said, please give me fruits. Here is my pet. Founder looked at this little child. He was so beautiful. His smile was so captivating. His large, lustrous eyes were overbrimming with love, with compassion. Her heart totally melted. She said, Child, take as many fruits as you like. Which fruits do you like? Krishna went like this, and she filled his arms with as many fruits as he could possibly carry, and more. She was just so happy. She was making nothing. She was simply giving out of love. She didn't even know he was God. She just thought he was a little boy, but she wanted to make him happy. And Krishna ran home, and then she turned toward the basket. She saw that the entire basket was overflowing with diamonds, rubies, emeralds, gold, silver, precious jewels and metals. The 
without fussing, the real wealth she received. The basket of her heart was over flooding with the jewels of ecstatic spiritual love, prema, prema bhakti, the ultimate perfection. Prema pumarta mahan, the scripture says, of all goals, pray or unconditional, unmotivated love is the ultimate. Later on, Krishna spent many years as a cowherd boy exchanging love with the gopis, the gopas, playing his flute, just to attract the hearts of all of the He went to Dwarka for the purposes of showing compassion to the people of this earth in the island of Dwarka. He became like a great king, a magnificent palace. And while he was living there, an old friend of his, a child who hadn't seen him in many, many years. His name was Sudama. He lived in a place called Pur Bandur, which is in Gujarat. Not that far from Dwarka. It's actually between Dwarka and Prabhasukhetra. And interestingly, Mahatma Gandhi was born in the same village as Sudama. You can go there. She was just thinking of him. She was satisfied. And he was satisfied. He was thinking of her. It was a very lovely relationship. Again and again, she said, your old friend, who you haven't seen in so many years, is living in Dwarka, and I was told that he has beautiful palaces. And not only that, he's the supreme lord. And he's the husband of the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi Devi, who's living with him in the form of Rukmini. He doesn't want to see you so poor and so hungry and so skinny with these old clothes. Just go to him. He'll give you anything you want. And Sudama would always reply, we shouldn't go to the Lord to ask him for things for us. We should go to the Lord to ask what I can do for you. So they never argued, but she always wanted him to go, and he never went. So finally, she wanted him to go only because she wanted him to be happy, and ultimately he went only to make her happy. This is a type of competition. It's very nice. <laughs> very calm. So he said, all right, I'll go. He was thinking, even if I don't ask for anything, I'll get to see Krishna again. I haven't seen him for so long. I'll get to see Krishna again. 
So he told his wife that I can't go without giving a gift to him. He's the Lord. Do we have anything we can give him? And she looked around the house and they didn't have anything. But she went out and begged and she got four handfuls of chipped rice. Do you know what chipped rice is? It's not a very luxurious type of rice. It's the cheapest rice. Chipped rice is what people will give the poorest beggars. Because usually that's, you want to give them the thing that's worth the least. Dry chips of rice. Not even whole grains, just chipped up rice. Really the very bottom of a barrel. So she put it in a piece of cloth and tied a knot around it and gave it to him and he put it around his shoulder. And he walked. Many, many kilometers from poor Bandor to Tuarco. And as he approached, he saw magnificent Them, and he saw incredible palaces. And although he was very simple, tattered clothes, very skinny little guy, he was given entrance into the very inner sanctum of the main palace of Dwarka. And there, Lord Krishna was sitting on a bedstead with Rukmini, the supreme goddess of fortune the feminine aspect of the divine. They were together. And as soon as Lord Krishna saw Sudama, he got up from his seat and he bowed down to Sudama. Then when he got up, he embraced Sudama with so much love and affection. And he took the little skinny body of Sudama and put, it on, put that body on his own bedstead. Then he got water, warm, scented water with flower petals, and very carefully washed his devotee's feet. Then took the water that he washed the feet of Sudama with and sprinkled on his own head and on, his, on Rubini's head. Feeling that I'm becoming purified by getting the water from the feet of such a beautiful devotee. Then he offered arti, he offered incense and lit lamps to his devotee. Then he arranged for wonderful prasad, nice, nice food, something that Sudama hadn't eaten in decades. And he Krishna was personally serving him and giving him more and asking him, what can I give? And meanwhile, Rukmini had a fan, a chamber of tail fan, and she was very carefully, lovingly fanning Sudama. This fanning with a yak tail is a symbol of total service. Rukmini is the source of all wealth, of all fortune, and she's humbly serving a penniless beggar because of his devotion. Then they talked, wonderful talks, the Srimad Bhagavatam, they go into a lot of nice philosophy. And Krishna is reminding Sudama, do you remember when we were very young, many years ago, we both lived in the ashram of Sandhya Panimuni, who was our guru. And we were learning so many things from him, from so many subjects, character, philosophy, arts, sciences, spiritual practices. Do you remember those days? And do you remember the time when our guru Mata, the wife of our guru, 
she sent us to get firewood in the forest. And we went deep into the forest looking for the best firewood to bring back. While we were there, there was a gigantic dust storm. And there were lightning bolts and thunder. Then torrents and torrents of rain. Krishna said it wasn't just rain, it was a devastating rainfall. Torrential. And we couldn't move. It became freezing. We were shivering. We were just sitting in the trees. And we couldn't see. We didn't know where to go or where not to go. And the whole night passed. And then the guru and his wife and, and all of the um, and all of the disciples, they all came looking, 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 and finally they found us and brought us home. And our guru said, you have endured so many difficulties just to serve me. Because you have done this, I bless you. All perfections will be yours. Sudhaya was listening to Krishna. He said, you are the Supreme Lord, but just to taste the beauty of these loving exchanges, you accept the role of a servant, a disciple. <laughs> you accept blessings. <laughs> it is the exchange of your love. They went on talking for hours and hours and hours so intimately as friends. And then Krishna was within everyone's heart and who knows everything. He said, Sudama, I could understand that you brought me a gift, something to eat. Why are you not giving it to me? And Sudama was, he just ate these very, very wonderful foods. And he's living in this, and he's sitting in this extravagant palace. And he's thinking, how could I give Krishna chip rice? So he didn't say a word, he just put his head down. Actually, I didn't bring anything. Krishna said, you did bring something. And Sudama didn't say. And then Krishna knew exactly what it was. He snatched that little satchel, little satchel of chipped rice and took it. And he said, Sudama, if someone offers me even the most luxurious food without pure devotion. I have no attraction to it. But even if one gives me the simplest thing, a leaf of fruit, a little water, with devotion, I take the greatest pleasure accepting it. And then he ate a, had a morsel of that rice. Just as putting water on the root of the tree nourishes the whole tree, by satisfying the Lord, one becomes greatly, one fulfills all one's requirements. And he went to take another morsel, but Rukmini stopped. She said, you have already satisfied the entire creation by taking one morsel. There's no need for you to eat any more of this. And they went on talking for the rest of the night. And the next morning, Sudama left. And on his way home, he was thinking, how wonderful. Krishna's the Supreme Lord. And I'm just a little brown with dirty clothes, without anything. And yet he embraced me with his own arms. He embraced me with tears in his eyes, so much affection, so much love. And he washed my feet. And he served me. And Rukmini was fanning me and praising me. He wasn't proud. He was humbled. The Lord is Dina Bandhu. He's everyone's best friend. And as he was thinking like this, he was overwhelmed. He was weeping. But then as he came close to his house, he thought, what is my wife going to think? Because I didn't ask Krishna for anything. I never asked him. And not only that, he didn't give me anything. <laughs> and then he was thinking, this is Krishna's love.
tough for me because Krishna knows if he were to give me anything more than I already have, I'm going to become proud, I'm going to become attached, and all my devotion is going to be spoiled. So the Lord gave me nothing just to protect me. How wonderful, how grateful I am. Then he came to his property. I was very bewildered because he saw an incredible palace. And there were parks and wonderful trees and all sorts of auspicious, colorful birds singing sweet songs. And he saw incredibly beautiful people walking around, finely dressed. There were flowers, fragrance. He was wondering, where am I? Am I lost? Did I come to the wrong place? What's happening? Then he saw his wife come out of the palace, and she was very finely dressed with ornaments. She was weeping tears, incessant tears from her eyes. She just came before him with folded palms. She couldn't say a word, and he couldn't say a word. They both walked together into the palace. It was more beautiful than the palaces of heaven. The beds were made of ivory. The pillars were made of jewels. It was wonderful. And Sudama understood. I didn't ask Krishna for anything. I gave him chipped rice, and he gave me this in return. He and his wife, they lived together in that palace for the rest of their lives. But the beautiful thing that Srimad Bhagavatam reveals to us, their consciousness was exactly as it was when they were living in the straw hut. Even though they were eating nice food, they weren't skinny anymore. They had nice clothes. They had all kinds of servants and maid servants and everybody around them. But they used everything for the pleasure of the Lord and the welfare of others. If one has great material things, to utilize them for a spiritual purpose is the perfection of life. And if one doesn't have anything to utilize Whatever little we have, our body, our words, our chipped rice, <laughs> for the satisfaction of the Lord, is the perfection of life. There is no difference. And through this beautiful story, the Lord revealed how Sudama, he never became proud, he never became greedy. He utilized everything the Lord gave him in a spirit of love and compassion. Krishna and to all beings. And his wealth was not an impediment. In fact, it enhanced his spirituality. In this age of Kali, Lord Krishna appeared again as Lord Chaitanya.